Hey, it's me again. I want to create a video on how to test yourself for adrenal fatigue. Again, this is not the definitive diagnosis for adrenal diseases. I'm just teaching you this so you can get some clues on maybe some potential weaknesses within your adrenals, but you go to your doctor to confirm it. Okay, so that said, there are several symptoms that go along with the adrenal function. Uh, you can't get to sleep easily. Maybe you're exhausted at 9 o'clock. And if you don't go to bed between 9 and 10 and you miss that cutoff, you start waking up and now you really can't get to sleep, maybe 11 or 12, and you're just wired. And now it takes 90 minutes because you missed the wave. And then you might get up at 2 o'clock. You might wake up feeling exhausted. Those are symptoms of the adrenal. You're tired in the day, especially an hour after lunch. You're exhausted. You need a nap. Um, yet at 2 o'clock in the morning, you're very wide awake. Achy, you can call that whatever you want. You can call it plantar fasciitis, that's inflammation of the feet. You can call it fibromyalgia. All that means is you're running out of the anti-inflammatory hormones and your whole body is achy. Brain fog, hard to focus, non sequitur, go in a room, can't remember why you went in there. Um, you know, it's just not clear. You're reading a book, it doesn't really go in. Um, low tolerance, people are starting to get on your nerves, right? You're edgy. Um, you, you go uh, into a room and you see something out of order and your attention focuses in on only that and not the rest of the room. Breathing issues, and that has to do with two things. Number one, going up a stairs, flight of stairs, and your, your legs are getting heavier, okay? Or at night, you can't get enough air in. That's a symptom of adrenal because your pH is actually too alkaline, not too acidic, and that you're having breathing problems. Okay, sinus. The sinus does get congested with adrenal. Um, so that's one thing, and you can get allergies as well. Decreased libido is adrenal. And lastly, dizzy, dizzy when you stand up. So let's pretend that you're laying down like that on a table, and then you lay for about three or four minutes, and you take your blood pressure, okay? And then you stand up and take the blood pressure, okay? That is a test to measure adrenal function and it's called the Raglan's test. So basically you just check your blood pressure lying down for, you know, wait, just relax for a few minutes and then stand up and check your blood pressure. Now, normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. So let's say it's 120 over 80. And when you stand up, this blood pressure, the top number, that's called the systolic, that should go up by six to 10 points normally. With adrenal fatigue, it will go down or it goes excessively too high. So it's a really simple way to determine your ability to adapt to gravity stress. So now that's how you do the test, but here's the thing. <clears throat> Let's get to the purpose of the adrenal um, and your adrenal gland. Your adrenal gland is a survival gland. It actually helps you cope with stress. It helps you adapt your body to stress. Standing up is a little bit of gravity stress and your body will then adapt and raise the blood pressure to adapt for that position change. Because if you did not adapt to that gravity stress, there won't be enough blood flow in your brain and you will pass out. Thus the symptom of dizzy when you stand up too fast. Okay, Does you get that? So that's a good way to see if your body is adapting. Another way, you could run up the stairs. And if you get out of breath too fast from a little run up the stairs, we know that's an adrenal issue or heavy legs. Um, some people will get up too fast and they can even pass out. That's an adrenal weakness because, it, because what happens, <clears throat> the adrenal gland has an outside. This is all gland tissue and they're both on the kidneys. And it has an inside. The adrenal gland is the only gland that has two parts, an inside and an outside. The outside is all gland tissue, produces hormones, but the inside is all nerve tissue. I don't know if you knew that. So it's all nerve tissue in there. Uh, so it has a kind of a double thing. And the nerve tissue inside the adrenal produces hormone-like messages, and they're called neurotransmitters. Adrenaline, noradrenaline, serotonin, 
dopamine, GABA, those are all neurotransmitters, and adrenaline is a stress hormone. So adrenaline is there to help neurologically uh, activate certain things, like if you being chased by a tiger, the artery has to open up to the heart, the lung has to open up. I mean, think about it, they'll, they'll even give people uh, an EpiPen, epinephrine, to help them breathe if they have an allergy. They'll even inject the heart with adrenaline to open up the blood flow. Um, so, in other words, this tissue on the inside is part of the adrenal system of the stress response. It gets your body to adapt to stress. And if you wanted to know the name of that nervous system, I'll just give it to you. It's called the sympathetic nervous system. Another name for the sympathetic nervous system is the flight or fight mode. So um, you probably heard that tossed around, but I want to explain what that means a little bit more. If, if you see a lion in the wilderness uh, chase a zebra, the lion is attacking, um, he's fighting the zebra. The zebra is flighting, he's running away. They're both experiencing flight or fight. Just depends on what end of the spectrum. The lion is looking for supper, and the zebra is looking to avoid being supper. And so it's both a stressful situation. One is a starving situation. If I don't eat that animal, I'm going to, be, I'm going to die. It's a survival thing. Zebra, if I get eaten, I won't survive. So that's what flight or fight means. And so we all have the system inside our body. But we're not being chased by tigers. What we're being stressed out is the news, the media, other people, threatened financial disasters, threatened stresses, losses, physical trauma. So you have a lot of other stresses, worry, that type of thing. That type of stress is equivalent to physical trauma. Okay? So basically, in a thumbnail sketch, if you're suspicious, suspecting that your adrenals are fatigued, you can simply just check one test. You can just basically check the blood pressure lying and standing and seeing if this blood pressure um, goes up six to 10 points. If it doesn't, then we know there's some weakness within that system. There's a lot of videos I have on what you do about adrenal fatigue, but I wanted to explain just a way to test it. Okay. Now, um, in this next part, I want to show you one more part or one more thing that happens uh, with adrenal and a very simple thing you can do to help with adrenal fatigue. So one of the problems with an, a burnt out adrenal is that you start excessively thinking and analyzing everything. Let me demonstrate. Oh my God, how many calories is this? Gosh, my wife is really irritating me. John at work, he is just really something else. My videographer, he's taking way too long. When you're doing this excessive thinking, I know it's hard to turn it off, but really you have to realize what's happening. You're losing or you lost your space. The best thing, the easiest thing that you can do when you're stressed out is create space. What do you do? You get outside, go for a walk, go for a hike. Get out there and just get your attention on something else and do it for an hour. Do it for longer. It's very therapeutic to add more space because what that will do that will chill out the adrenals, allow you to heal better, um, versus going into the gym behind the treadmill and trying to watch that TV screen right there. Yeah, you worked out, but you didn't get any more space. So you really have to balance out the, the entire day of activities for something that will just get your attention going way out there. All right? Hope that helps. I'll see you in the next video. So if you're enjoying this content, Go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.